Welcome. Now let's go through the IFRIC number nine reassessment of embedded derivatives. Now embedded derivatives is something on top of the host contract. So a common example for this will be the convertible bond. Because on top of the bond, we've got the conversion feature on top of that. Because it allows the holder to convert that bond into shares at some point in the future. And of course, in the financial market, you can see different types of embedded derivatives designed by the bank. Now, all we can do is that for changes in value for a derivative, according to IFRIC number 9, we directly put them into the PNO as the gains or losses. Let's see an example here. He said the FinCorp enters into a debt instrument, which means lends money to others, which is a bond, has a special feature. The interest payment linked to the performance of a stock market index. All right. So if this is the case then, from the issuer's point of view, that when the issuer issues the debt instrument, the issuer needs to pay the normal interest. However, if a stock market performs really well, the issuer may need to increase the interest payment to FinCorp. So from the issuer's point of view, for example, if FinCorp buys the bond, of course, the issuer will receive money from the FinCorp. But at the same time, the issuer needs to recognize the associated liability. Now let's put this down. Firstly, we've got the issuer, which means the seller sells bond to FinCorp company, which is the buyer. In other words, it's the investor. Of course, from the issuer's point of view, sales bond and gets money, it has an obligation to repay this back at some point in the future. So this means that for the very first start, the issuer, let's say, debiting cash from the buyer, let's say, a thousand or a thousand dollars, and credit the bond's liability, let's say, $950, and putting the remaining balance to the embedded derivative liability worth of $50 there. That $50 can be uh, agreed that when we are assessing the net payment to the investor at some point in the future. And of course, for the 950, we'll be using an amortized cost method by recognizing the associated finance costs and the interest payment each and every year. However, for that $50, we'll be using a fair value through p and method to account for it. So this means that one year's gone by later on, if the stock market performs quite well, the issuer would need to pay additional interest, perhaps at some point in the future, to the investor. So if this is the case then, let's say the original value for the embedded derivative liability was 50, but now we assess that fair value to be 70. An increase by $20 here, what we can do is to debit the p and as a loss or expense worth of 20 and to increase the embedded 
derivative liability. By twenty dollars. Okay, and that's all we can do. Let me just take take you back to the uh, to the standard content. So, for example, the reassessment of the embedded derivative. If there's a change in the terms of the contract. We will not reassess the existence of the derivative. So, for example, initially we saw a contract, we determined that, okay, it's an embedded derivative. Okay, that exists. And later on, we don't need to say to ourselves that whether or not that still exists, because there's no change in the contract term, that derivative still exists. However, we need to separate it out. So, for example, we identify the embedded derivative, something on top of the host contract. We account for it separately as a derivative, as a fair value through PL method, and make sure that you're ready for that. Just a brief introduction of myself, Steve Chen, the fellow member of ACCA, author for four accounting books, and the current ACCA exam marker. I hope you find this section useful and best of luck to your future studies. APC Accounting for your future.